Hello everyone and welcome back to another video of mine. This time I'm back with Not Me episode 14, the last episode, the finale, y'all. I've been trying to drag this episode out as much as I could because I didn't want the story to end. But sadly, everything has to come to an end sometimes and I'm intrigued to know how they're gonna wrap the story up. We ended last episode tragically with them betraying everyone, but most importantly, he betrayed Yoke, and this man actually got shot. So it literally was like a even bigger backstab. I just hope that this man is capable to cope, but I'm actually scared because right now the police knows that they're in the hospital. So considering the fact that there were already a lot of policemen with Dan when they came to negotiate... I am scared that there are gonna be a lot more armed policemen out there. And Yoke in his current situation is not capable to do anything. I mean, the doctors were capable to get the bullet out, but like, he's not really capable to do much. Like, he needs time to heal. And that's the thing that he doesn't really have. They need to run. But at least Black is there now to help them all out. And I just can pray that everything is gonna work out fine. But we will see. If you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. For the full uncut reaction, you can check out my Patreon. The link is in my description box below. And without further ado, let's start. You can't fight. So cute. Give me a hug. Thank you. Sir, he's the only one that actually can do something right now. He needs to distract him somehow. I love this because he realized that his little brother can't be without Sean. I do not count this as a surrender. <laughs> Sorry, like, Black just gives off the vibes. He'd rather have someone literally stab him than this man actually being willing to give himself over. Besides, right now he's not only doing it for himself, he's doing it for his brother too. I'm freaking out! Typical. Ridiculous. Look at this. Literally, always him. I hate it. No, it's everyone or no one. He must feel so guilty because all this happened because technically Dan. Betrayed them. And Jake was the one that brought him in. No, he's not okay. ไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้ยไอ้เหี้
But if people keep on protesting, maybe it will be Thailand believing that the system is wrecked, and they will not stand for anything that the people right now who are in power have to say. They will not do what they want, and they will start protesting as well. So they literally will lose their power because power is given to people by. The citizens. One person can have power without people backing them up. That's how things work. Like if you don't have people behind you that actually support you and your ideals and actually to a specific degree help you grow and achieve that kind of power, you won't be capable to do anything. You're nothing without people, and that's literally what democracy is. Like one person at the top is standing up for every single. Even though, like I said multiple times, what I feel about the system and about politicians actually standing up for even the small voices, like they don't. But let's ignore that. Like that's what people are being told that politicians stand up for the citizens, and that's what they want to show in this story as well. Like politicians out there, they have the power, and people that are standing up and they are like saying that Tawi is not good, he is not a good politician. He's starting to lose his power because he's losing his followers. He's losing people that used to believe in him, because they, that group, as an ROL, they started to show what shitty business Tawi is doing. So they started to see Tawi for who he truly is, and that made people overthink their position. They were like, "No, Tawi isn't the best solution for us or for our society, so he needs to leave." They started to support that group and not Tawi, and Tawi noticed, and he was like, "We need to get them out of the way because if they're not there, at least that's their logic, which is a stupid logic in my eyes. They think that if that group is out of the way, there will be no protesters. But this reminds me of something that Todd said to black ones. He was like, even if you get rid of one bad person, there will be many other bad people in the world taking over that bad guy's place. You will never be capable to rid." The entire humanity of bad people and about people that will try to do shady business in order to have more than other people, as in in order to be above the law. And now th- they think that if they get rid of the group, that everything will fall back into place until we will be capable to have the power again. Like I said, stupidity. But now coming back to Yook, he accepted this man for who he is, and he was like, "Promise me." He actually said, "Promise me that if I take you to the group, if I actually put myself on the line, like he actually was like, if he should do something bad, I will punish him myself, and I will kick myself out too." As in, him being in that group, in my eyes, was this man's life mission. He wanted to be in that group so badly because he wanted to make life better for people like him, as in people that had the short end of the stick, like his mother. People that sadly only got to see the negative side of things. He wanted to make life easier for people like him and for his mom. Like his motivation was his mom, so that was an even bigger thrive for him to continue going. Now, he actually. Put everything on the line for Dan, and Dan betraying him—that's the biggest blow ever. I can't even imagine what this man is going through. Like this is psychological pain, and like literally, his mom wouldn't even know that he is gone. Like imagine, imagine this man. This man only had his mother, and his mother only had Yoke. Now imagine this man dying. The mother wouldn't know anything. Like imagine, like imagine if this would be going on in Yoke's mind. Like. Jesus, you failed your group. You failed your mother. You failed your own beliefs, like what you wanted to stand up for. And most importantly, you failed yourself because you allowed your feelings. As in, in that particular circumstance, he did betray them. Like I can't protect Dan. He betrayed them. He betrayed Yoke's trust, and now Yoke thinks that everything, every good moment that he had with Dan was just because of his own imagination, because he's in love with him. He will think that everything that happened wouldn't have happened if he wouldn't have allowed 
his heart to dictate what he does. Like a lot of people say, love makes you blind. And maybe York right now is thinking, maybe Dan showed shady parts while we were like integrating him into the group and I was just too in love to see it. So like everything that is going on right now is my fault from York's point of view. Like he will be thinking that because he is that pure hearted and I feel so bad for him he does not deserve to go through anything like this and he's even physically hurt like he's shot that was an even bigger backstab he got shot and he got stabbed in the heart why always yoke I did say last episode I have to say it here as well why always yoke this man cannot catch a break like even Sean got his damn happy ending but not my man Why can't Yoke have a happy ending? Can someone explain to me why this man always gets the short end of the stick? He only got the short end of things. Give this man a happy No, he ain't. Not bye. No, he thinks that she will think that he left her. No. This man actually. A disgusting shit, bitch. Oh my god. They're there. Let's go. You can't get them out. <laughs> People have spoken, bitch. You can't actually get rid of them. Release our friends, yes! See, that's what happens when you have like a mass of people. As soon as you take a stance and there are people supporting you, you can't win. Like they already made a stand. They already won. He got shot. No, you ain't. Your passion can unlock you. It can set you free. No, you ain't. Shut up. You ain't. Like the medicine is still wearing off. This man is not fine. He wants to get it. Oh, anything. That's it. Bye. They are cute, but still, like, I feel bad for Black. Like, he was kicked out of everything. But maybe Black couldn't deal with the pressure of knowing that she would be in danger, and he doesn't care. Like I said, like I wouldn't want to return either. Like he has been kicked out of everything. Like even the people that he has been close to for such a long time said that he preferred his brother than him. I would feel so alone and so out of place. But he's not talking about his physical state, sir. He's talking about his psychological state. He's not gonna return to the group though. Yeah, you were so easy about the fact of replacing him. I wouldn't feel welcome here. No one wants to be a replacement. You were that willing to replace black with white. That. You guys, like, I need to add this before I can continue. Like, Sean actually being shocked. Like, is this man for real? Is he kidding me? He, as someone that is very, very sensitive, like I said it so many episodes, I feel bad for Black because he was kicked out by everything. Yes, he may not be the best person in the world. And, and yes, he may still have to learn a lot about life and about human emotions, etc. because he never shows them. But... Even if you don't really show your emotions, doesn't mean that you are not capable of experiencing them all. You're just not vocal about your emotions like other people. You can't really show them. 
but black feels them. He does. And me, as someone that is very sensitive, me giving everything for my goal, me creating a group in order to fight against the negative system, me giving it my all to the point where I actually ended up in the hospital in a coma. My twin brother coming in there, winning everyone over. And as soon as everyone knew that this isn't me, but my twin brother, they didn't care about telling me face to face that they preferred my twin brother to be in the group and not me. I wouldn't want to return either. Yes, they didn't say that they don't want Black to return at all. But me, no matter what I did, apparently you're always just complaining. And as soon as my brother says something, you're all in on it. You're all welcome. I would feel out of place. I would be so hurt because I make it my life's mission to make sure that the people that sadly got the short end of things, that they actually have a voice now. And the second I'm like three months out of the picture and my twin comes in, you all say that I suck, that everything that I've built for, that everything that I sacrificed in order to be part of this group was for nothing. I would feel so hurt. I would feel so abandoned. I wouldn't want to return there. I would be like, I gave up everything. Even the girl of my dreams. He did give up Eugene for his goal. Yes, it was his decision and the group has nothing to do with it. But still, like I'm literally pointing out everything that this man lost after he went into a coma. He lost the woman of his life to one of his friends. He lost the group. And the reason that he continued to live to his twin brother. Who am I now? Like, this group was my life. And my brothers stepped in, got the love of every single one of these members. And I'm not longer relevant there. I would feel so out of place. He's just so beautiful. I just immediately love every single scene this man is in. They can if they truly want to. This is him literally only asking for Dan. Because he's like, did I imagine things? Was I the only one that truly believed that this man wanted to help? I'm in pain. I'm just in pain for Yolk. Y'all, I'm in pain. <laughs> Don't touch me. Because of the connection. Yes. Because of the connection you two have, you feel how much he loves him. But it's time for you to protect yourself. He's such a good brother. Oh, what happened with Todd? Did you just say the same? Do same the same. Put him in the hospital this time. I said it so many times already. We can say it was justice. He deserved it. Same with same. You put him in the hospital this time. This is just karma. You put me in the hospital, I put you in the hospital. Oh, wow. Deserved. <laughs> Y'all, break my heart in two. Come on. Why not? Wow. And every time he looks at it, he has to think of this man's betrayal. <laughs> Hated. And that intimate moment that these two shared. Like... Yeah. You can see it. This man has not forgotten. Look at him. Like, it was obvious. Yuck. I can still change it. I can still change the past. I can still change it. Y'all did the... The psychological torment. <laughs> the psychological no, pain. No. This man. He did not dare to show up there. What is he gonna do? Is he gonna sing him a serenade? I think you're a little too late, sir. Uh, to be quite honest, I don't even know what I would have liked this man to do. But sure as hell not wait 30 years 
and then show up when this man is willing to finally move on from you. Because technically what he asked Gumpa was like, do you actually believe in change if people truly want to change? Yes. So that means this man didn't want to change for me. Thank you. you can't move on. Oh, uh-uh. Like, break me, come on. Why not? The shock. <laughs> As he should. Like shit. If we consider how much you hurt him. As you should. That's justice. That's karma. N not the montage. Who me? Who me? I say <laughs> Bitch slap! You didn't feel anything no. back then either? I'm going to i The melody's making it worse, y'all. Punch him, kick him, spit him in the face. <laughs> I mean, a dessert. <laughs> He's like, whew, okay, I feel a little better. That small bleeding on your lip is nothing compared to the bleeding this man had on his heart. <coughs> if you hurt him again. I will keep a close eye on you. If you hurt him again, I'll be knocking at your door. Okay, I died, y'all. We can end here. This man don't care. He's like, goodbye, I need a head start. I'm smaller than you. Superman is coming. This man has his phone in his pants. They are too adventurous, like I would die. Imagine if my phone would like go down into the river. Uh uh. All well, that ends well. Oh, stop it. You may kiss the bride. Mm -hmm. That's literally what the scene is given. Bravo. Brava. You may close the curtain. Make out for the entire world to see what real love looks like. Not gender based, no nothing, just real love. Y'all, I'm actually heartbroken. This was the end of Not Me, and I don't even know what to say. It was bittersweet. It was bittersweet, I have to say that, but to be quite honest, like, I feel that there should have been more. Like, we should have seen more, but at least Yolk got what he wanted or more like he got what he deserved he finally got the man of his dreams let's just hope that he actually kept his words we won't know because there's only this show i only heard a few rumors that they couldn't continue this show even though they wanted to because apparently the books were criticizing the system way too much and the show could have been cancelled because of the harsh criticism that was in the books so they had to stop with this episode and there won't be any future episodes of not me so this show was beautiful it had everything that you would want to talk about like these sensitive topics that you normally don't talk about because you're scared that people will not agree with your opinion or you might be pointed out or like I said people that actually were standing up for themselves or actually addressed the faulty system or did something that the authorities didn't approve of they were cancelled as in literally cancelled a lot of journalists were actually taken down because they uploaded something that the authorities or like the state the government didn't approve of and they made what that person uploaded onto social media or onto the internet disappear and they made her disappear as well i think it was a female journalist from china 
that got put in prison for actually saying the truth or I don't know what happened back there. But yeah, sensitive topics, they're rarely talked about because you don't really know how people will react, especially authorities. So the fact that this show wasn't canceled, even though how harshly this is actually tackling social criticism and how horrible the system is and that it isn't fair or just for anyone is like the greatest blessing in the world. Like I actually thank a lot of people for making me watch this. I've seen a few memes often because there are a lot of first sims and they like put a lot of shorts on YouTube. So I saw always a few moments of first and not me, but that was about it. And I don't even know what to do. Like, I remember that there were a lot of people that said that they wanted me to react to the eclipse. You can tell me in the comments if you want me to react to it. But like, have in mind, I watched the show already, but I could like put in my few cents. And let's be honest, considering the fact we're all waiting for a first Kao Chung series, this would be a good distraction. Like... This would be a good use of time for waiting for these two to appear on our screens again. I think they announced in their last fan meet in Taipei, I think it was, that they will be in part two of GMM TV. And the way they said it, I think that this is like another BL show with these two as main characters. I mean, we all hope. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this series with me. And I will see you in another video. Like, just let me know what show you guys would like me to react to next under this video. And I will see you in another video.